My name is uh, Sam Cranny Evans. I'm a RUSI Associate Fellow. I spend my time researching modern warfare and the technologies that will change it in our lifetime. The paper looks into the subject of lethal autonomous weapons, the development of these systems, and the likelihood of proliferation within the next 10 to 15 years. The research was conducted because it is an important area, especially with the growth and development of artificial intelligence, which makes the likelihood and availability of these weapons uh, much greater. It is difficult to find a universal definition for a lethal autonomous weapon. This arises from complexity around the way that a lot of modern weapon systems work. Uh, there is already a great deal of autonomy in some of the systems that are in service. Um, and also around reticence amongst potential users to potentially define a system that they might like to employ in the future in a way that leads to its regulation. For the purposes of the research, uh, we've defined an autonomous weapon as something that is capable of selecting and engaging a target based on the way it perceives its own environment and the information that it's able to see. That will almost of necessity involve some form of software, but we have not boundaried the research by saying that it must include artificial intelligence. The emerging concerns that are driving research around this topic is that it is increasingly possible to build weapons that operate without human oversight to conduct a wide variety of jobs. One of the examples we draw on in the paper is a weapon system called Harpy, which was actually developed in the uh, 1980s and 1990s to hunt down and engage uh, air defense radars. And Harpy does this almost completely autonomously. It does not use artificial intelligence as we would recognize it today. Um, but it is a ethically and relatively straightforward system because it only attacks radar signals that it has been programmed to attack. It is not likely, for example, to go and attack an airport because it is unlikely that an airport will be using the same radar signals. However, in the present day, um, and as we can see through the paper, it is possible for somebody to use YouTube and Reddit threads to understand how to build a paintball sentry gun that will autonomously shoot anything that moves in front of it. It's a small step from there in terms of engineering to build an autonomous uh, machine gun that shoots anything that moves in front of it. And so that's really what drives the difference in this research. That's why it's an important piece of uh, information to put out there now. We arrived at three uh, sets of autonomous weapons uh, within the paper. The reason for this is not all autonomous weapons are the same and not all autonomous weapons can uh, have the potential to destabilize the international political order or military balance in the same way. The three categories we found have been named the minimum viable product paradigm, the military off the shelf, and then the boutique. And basically the differences are very much in the name, but the minimum viable product described an autonomous weapon that a suitably motivated individual with relatively low levels of resource could build. And we're seeing this now in Ukraine. This is being borne out by the use of drones and FPV kamikaze drones to attack tanks uh, and various other structures in Ukraine. It is now uh, becoming apparent that some of those on the Russian side and on the Ukrainian side are actually using artificial intelligence to do portions of those engagements autonomously. These aren't state level weapons. They've not been made by a large defense manufacturing prime. They've been made by motivated individuals working at home using their software skills and openly available technology to make weapons that are autonomous to some extent. The second uh, element is the military off the shelf systems. Now there are multiple defense companies around the world building systems with a high degree of autonomy. Um, one example that is uh, developed in the paper is the Hunter 2S, which is from a company called Edge in the UAE. And that is a swarming system where the target is initially designated by a human. 
the drones are released and the drones decide amongst themselves how to conduct that engagement. We've since seen uh, other systems deployed in Ukraine, such as the Russian Lancet, which is very highly likely to employ computer vision and image recognition to conduct a portion of its engagement and remove that element from the operator. So these systems are autonomous to some extent. They make decisions about how and when to engage targets autonomously based on their understanding of the information around them but they are not destabilizing. The final category is the boutique autonomy. And here, this refers to the very high level autonomous wingman type solutions that are being developed primarily in the US, also by China. And these are the systems that are seen to be most destabilizing. And the reason for that is they're very often designed around either engaging or disrupting an enemy's strategic deterrent. And for that reason, they have the greatest possibility to create an imbalance within militaries and between countries. Regulation is an important aspect of the development of this technology, simply because it is presently difficult to understand the full limits of what can be achieved with, with AI-enabled systems. That doesn't mean that they should be regulated out of existence, that's almost certainly impossible, but the evidence we've managed to gather indicates that a use case based regulation, um, so for example that might include specific uh, coding and training of AI models that prevents them from engaging certain types of targets in certain scenarios, this is all eminently possible. To sum up, the existence of lethal autonomous weapons or the technology to enable them on their own does not guarantee their proliferation. There are multiple examples of military technologies that have been developed uh, that are notionally game-changing and they have gone nowhere for one reason or another. And, and this is part of development, it's part of the development of modern warfare and modern weapons. So. I think we should expect to see the proliferation of initial types of autonomous weapons, which I think represent the thin end of the wedge. And as they are able to prove their value when compared with conventional weapons, then adoption may follow at a greater and greater pace.